In another development out of the Russia investigation, President Trump's former deputy campaign manager, Rick Gates, is expected to plead guilty in a deal with special counsel Robert Mueller. Gates was indicted by a federal grand jury in October on several counts, including fraud and money laundering as part of the probe into ties between Russia and the Trump campaign. This comes just days after the Justice Department charged 13 Russian nationals with interfering in the 2016 presidential election in an effort to boost Trump's campaign. There, these are the first indictments of Russians by special counsel Robert Mueller. Paula is also our <laughs> CBS News justice reporter, and she has been following this story extensively. Paula, remind us exactly what this group is being charged of. What's interesting about this indictment is that it lays out in specific detail how the Russians meddled in the election. Because we've been hearing about meddling for a long time, but what exactly does that mean? And here, Robert Mueller went into specific details. He said that this group, with a funder, who's a, a close ally of Vladimir Putin, they engaged in several years' worth of, of meddling. And what they did is they'd buy ads on, on various sites. They would create Facebook groups to push out this message on social media. In some cases, they were so crafty that they would schedule two rallies in the same city on the same day on opposite sides of the same issue. So while it's very unlikely that any of the people in this indictment will ever see the inside of a U.S. courtroom, Russia's well, not going to indict them. Right. What this does legally is it lays out exactly what happened and what crimes were committed under U.S. law. That was going to be my next question, because clearly there's no one, no one is going to jail, no Russians no. anyway are going to jail. So what is the exact purpose of all of this? Exactly. And we've seen this before, where the Justice Department has come out and they have indicted people working on behalf of foreign governments. We've seen it with China, now we're seeing it with Russia. But there's there's no honest expectation that these people are ever going to be ever going to be extradited or, or see the inside of a U.S. courtroom. Instead, the purpose here it's political, it, it's policy, right? You're laying out the details of what happened and then sort of kicking it to lawmakers to do something about right. it, or in some cases, not do anything about it. If you're still not not believing that this actually happened. Now we do know that former Trump campaign advisor Rick Gates is expected to accept a plea deal. What is he being charged with? He currently faces about a dozen charges. He's facing dozens of years in prison for several, several different crimes. First of all, not disclosing his work and his earnings uh, as a lobbyist on behalf of certain foreign governments, many sort of fraud-related conspiracies in terms of what he did in his, his business with Paul Manafort. But now we're learning that he is willing to plead guilty to some of these charges in exchange for not taking it to trial and not potentially spending the rest of his life in prison. Incredible. So. If he does accept a plea deal, what does that mean? What's the significance of that? It's a win for Robert Mueller because, first of all, Mueller then won't have to use all these resources to put on a trial. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of resources. He's also getting valuable information for his investigation. We expect that the most valuable information Gates has is on Paul Manafort. Right. And what that does is it continues to kind of turn up the heat on Paul Manafort. Because in addition to this news of a plea deal, we also have the special counsel just dropping it into a filing on Friday that they have new evidence against Paul Manafort and could add new charges. So all of this could incentivize Manafort to plea, but there is still a hope for him of a possible pardon even if he's convicted. So he and his attorneys, they need to get together and decide whether or not they're going to risk this a trial. So it sounds like there's a bit of a domino effect at play. Where does the special counsel sort of hope that domino effect ends? The hope is you sort of start at, at the bottom and work your way up and get people to flip. And they've been pretty successful so far. George Papadopoulos has entered a plea deal. Mike Flynn has entered a plea deal. We know that Flynn will provide the special counsel with information about who specifically directed him to talk with the Russians during the transition. It's unclear whether or not Manafort has any information of value for the investigation. He's also given no indication he wants to cooperate. So right now I think the, the focus is in sort of squeezing Manafort to cough up any information he has in exchange for, again, not risking potentially mm -hmm. spending the rest of his life in prison. So do some speculate that he could flip on Jared Kushner if there is anything there? At this point it's unclear what information he would mm -hmm. have. And I've been in court many times with him and his attorneys. They've given absolutely no signal right. that they want to cooperate. And again, he's in this unique position of their there could be a presidential pardon even if he is convicted on all of these charges. And so it really becomes a question of do you have the stomach and the money to play this one out? And it appears that Rick Gates has a young family. He does not have as many resources. He is not willing to, to take this to trial. 
even though many legal experts say you could beat a lot of these charges, Manafort so far looks like he's willing to take it all the way through. Speaking of presidential pardons, though, there is a growing chorus of conservative voices saying to the president, hey, why don't you just pardon everyone at this point? <laughs> Do you think there's any chance that well, will happen? Well, you know, every day, you just never know what's going to happen in the Russia investigation. Uh, there's always a possibility. Uh, people talked about the preemptive pardon with uh, former Secretary Clinton, too. They said, can somebody just give her a blanket pardon? And they we're sort of in uncharted territory yeah. here. I don't know how many people you can give a blanket <laughs> pardon to, but every day is a new constitutional question. There's a lot of uncharted territory. It's a lot. It's, it's very fun. Paula, <laughs> thank you so much for that.